Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Today is World Sickle Cell Day. Now, in celebration of this, we have two people who are representatives from the Sickle Cell Foundation of Nigeria here just to create awareness about sickle cell and to share their own personal struggles because both of them are people living with sickle cell. We have on my immediate, on my extreme left, Abimbola Ogumekon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being here. And on my immediate left, we have Oyeshala Oni. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having us. And two, two of you are two people living with sickle cell anemia. So let's start with you, Oyeshala. At what point did you realize or did you know that you were living with sickle cell? As early as five, six. But though my mom found out when I was two, but as early as I could tell my left from right, I knew that there was something different. And you? Um, I didn't know until I got into university. Though I've been having crisis prior to that time, but I finally knew what was going on when I gained admission to university. So what was that like for you, finding out so much later in your life that you, you do have sickle cell anemia? What was that like? Um, I was surprised. Really, because I didn't look like I didn't look like someone that has sickle cell. My in my head, I always thought people with sickle cell were skinny, yellow eyes, and I didn't look like that. So I was really, really shocked when I found out. All right, now there's certain challenges that people living with sickle cell have had to live with over the years. So Ishala, has it been for you over the years? You're married now with kids. I have a daughter, yes. You have a daughter? Yes. So tell us, how has it been for you over the years? What were some of the struggles you had to deal with? Um, challenges come in all aspects. But um, as, a, as, as a mother, there's also the, the pregnancy part. So you have to get extra medical attention as a sickle cell woman when you're pregnant. So I had to go to the hospital a lot of times. I had to run more tests than the average lady in the antenatal clinic. And then the healthcare needs to be different. You need to see a specialist, someone that knows their onions, a good hematologist. So yeah, the, and then also when it comes to the aspect of your career, it can be challenging because your health will get in the way. You, there are times you will fall ill. So sometimes, you know, you have to make compromises. Hmm. Let's speak about dating as well. Nigeria has one of the highest sickle cell, if I'm correct, actually, we have the highest number of sickle cell um, people in the world. Now, when it comes to things like relationships, we find that often in Nigeria, we ask certain questions like, oh, what's your genotype, you know? Just to know because it's such a prevalent matter that we're seeing here in Nigeria. What, what has that experience been like for you, especially when you were younger in university, in your days where you were at your prime time? Okay. I'm asking both, you can go first. <laughs> Okay, I didn't, I didn't really have that much experiences with the genotype and relationship issues. It was just a few times when the guy asks, okay, what's your genotype? And once he finds out that um, says that's the end of that conversation. Or maybe when he gets to a certain point and he finds out that's the end. Feelings would have started going in, would have started loving up, and then the guy just disappears. Yeah, it happens a couple of times, but most of the time, They've always been there. Let me just put it. Even though they have their low moments, but they've always been there. Yeah, for me, it was it was a bit different because I believe in being upfront from day one. So mm. if I met someone that just even showed an interest in me, I would say, "Oh, do you not have sickle cell?" So I tell them right from the scratch. So I really didn't have issues with that because even as a friend, you knew. So it was your decision to 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 go ahead or not. All right, now let's talk about some of the other stigmas that surround people living with sickle cell. Now, you've, we've mentioned, you've mentioned the challenges of people finding out your genotype and disappearing for a while. What are some of the other stigmas that surround people living with sickle cell that we need to shed the light on so that society can stop? Okay, I have met people, uh, people with sickle cell have approached me that um, their parents don't want them to go to school, you know, and for different reasons. Fine, they think that, oh, this child is sickly, or this child cannot go far. Maybe you spend too much money on school and the child dies. Oh, with sickle cell, you can be anything you want to be in life. People are living up to 60, 70 now. So I tell them, why are you locking your kids in the house? Let them go to school. Let them do everything that their mates are doing. They just need to know their limits. So, yeah, that's one of the myths that they can't, we, can't, we can't amount to much. And I'm so happy that now people are proving that wrong. Yes, and um, yesterday I met with... Um Alaja Alakija, she's the oldest woman living with sickle cell currently in Nigeria. How old is she? Wow. She's going to be 94 in November. Wow. wow. Yeah. She's going to be 94 in November. 
So, and then I tell people, I use her as an example to people that still is so much, she's 90 plus, she's still living, and that woman is like the funniest woman I've ever met, like super cool. That's how she is. She was really, really amazing when we went to meet her. So I use her as an example, and other people, some of my friends that live above 20, 40, and they're still living with sickle cell and doing their own things. Now, when I was in university, I had a friend who was living with sickle cell, and I remember there was a period of her life where she went, nobody knew where she was, and then I got a message from her one day, and she said, look, I've been in hospital that I, I have sickle cell anemia, no one knows, but, you know, like, I've been in hospital, and that's where I've been. So that was the first time that I realized that sickle cell really does affect one's day-to-day -day life. How would you say it impacts your day-to-day -day life every day? What would you say is the hardest thing that you have to pull through and the greatest challenge that comes your way? It's just every, every day, every day is a challenge. And, you know, for me, you have to find a balance. So um, what you would do and you would be okay, I may do it and I may fall ill. So for me, you know, when people say, oh, women shouldn't have ourselves, I, I have to, I've always had to have one because I can't do everything on my own. I need the help because I can't do so many physical things. So compromise, actually. You, they're so, you know, sometimes you, you just want to do something and you, you're falling ill. So you've had to, I've had to cancel a lot of things I need to do because of my elbow. It's just challenging because... Um, our climate again, you know, the weather is ultra easily dehydrated, so we fall ill more often, we have malaria, we have everything. So every day is just a challenge, but you need to be able to know your limits. That's the most important thing. Yeah, and also every day is different, different challenges every day. I can wake up today feeling very okay, and by night in the hospital, I can sleep very well, and 4 o'clock I'm already crying in pain. So every day is different. It's different. And in as much as I have sickle cell, she has sickle cell, there are some things she can do. If I try it, I'm in the hospital. There are some things I can do and she might not be able to do. Like in my family, we are two that are sickle cell, my sister and I. There are some things my sister can do if I try it. That's the end. Even though I look bigger than her and all that, she can still do most things than I can do. So... Each person has what is unique to them. You know, each person expresses or has to live life differently from the other. No two people living with sickle cell have should be forced energy. to yes. be able to have the same level of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, give us an idea of what it is. You know, you mentioned waking up at 4 a.m. crying. Take us through the process of a crisis. What does a crisis actually look like, feel like? Um, it's, it's, it's very horrible and ugly. For me, usually... It starts, if it's going to be very serious, I, I can tell because it starts in my back. It's just a sharp shooting pain. If I have something in my leg, like a pain in my leg, I, I still know that it's not so bad. But for when it's going to be serious, it's a sharp shooting pain. And one minute I could be talking to you, and the next minute I'm saying I need to get to the hospital because I know that it's that bad. It can't be explained. It really can't be explained. It's ex like somebody's crushing your bones. You're in pain, you know. And when you're in that pain, sometimes you can't you don't you can't sit. You can't lie down. You can't stand up. There's you're no you're rest you're restless. Exactly. No position is comfortable. No position is comfortable. It's really excruciating. And why I'm asking this question is because there are lots of people who still shove aside the conversation of genotype. I mean, our parents and our grandparents were not properly informed. Now, in our day and age, we know that when two people live in with AS, who are sickle cell carriers, that's the AS genotype. Mm -hmm. If two people of that sort get married, chances are that they could have a, sickle, a child living with sickle cell. But these days, we're still seeing some people saying, you know what, I, I'm in love with the person, we can find a way around it. So if you had the opportunity to speak to two people living with AS, or who had two AS carriers, who, um, sickle cell carriers, who wanted to get married, what would you say to them? Um, I usually don't advise them not to, because most of the time there's, no matter, there's no English or language that I speak to them that will make them listen. Most of the time, I advise people like that to seek counsel first. They should know their options, their betting options, pregnancy options. They should know everything. They should be educated. And then if there's a possibility for them to have sickle cell, they should also know the, the sickle cell child. They should also know the consequences of having uh, giving birth to a child that will have sickle cell that will have sickle cell anemia. So when they know their options, it's left to them to go ahead or not to go ahead. Now, 
Sickle cell is a horrible thing for anybody to have to go through and live with. But the good news is that, like we've said and we've spoken about long life and ages, it's not the end of the world. And with technology, we've seen different things, one of which is stem cell transplants. Now, a lot of our viewers out there may not know exactly what the stem cell transplant entails. Can you walk us through that? <clears throat> so um, it's basically like a bone marrow transplant. You, 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 you're getting it from somebody that has either AA or AS genotype and it's been transplanted to the person that has sickle cell then the blood you know if it's successful the blood will start producing the, the body will start the bone marrow will start producing blood that doesn't that is not sickle cell blood so in a way it's a cure yes and we've had a few success stories people who were living with so sickle definitely. cell who had ss um, genotype and they went through this and they become a definitely but with that sorry to cut you yeah. but as with all surgeries you know it's not everybody that that should have it because again you can your body can reject, reject it. it it can yeah. fail as well it can be horribly wrong so before you go for it the doctor has to certify that okay this is it's critical and you need it okay so now let's find out how available is this therapy in nigeria and how affordable is it um i don't, I don't know if it's readily available and i don't know no, in nigeria then, there are not many people that are able to afford it in nigeria especially with this our economy in Nigeria, some years ago, I think some seven, eight years ago, there was a successful case that was done in the University of Benin Teaching Hospital. Um, the, the, it was a young teenager. I don't, I'm not sure if male or female now, but it was done by a Nigerian team, and it was very successful. But, you know, it takes, it requires a lot of money. They need to set up a special suit for the surgeries because, you know, no contamination. And they didn't get enough money, so it's been, it's been, it's been stopped. People that want to do it now, have to go to India or America and it does cost a lot but you know you have to wait some some people can afford it but unfortunately most most cannot afford it and are there any home remedies that you've managed to pick up on over time that help you to reduce any pain you're feeling or help you to manage your sickle cell at home when you feel like you know what this is manageable I don't really need to get to the hospital for this I think <laughs> <laughs> she said Thank yes you. once you have sickle cell um, Generally, routinely, the doctors will give you some painkillers to have in the house. So I also use my hot water bottle very well. When I'm having pains, I fill up my hot water bottle. The heat helps. And then sometimes I could use um, the balm. Wow. You know, this, there are some ibuprofen balms. Balms that have um, analgesics in it, yes. Or even some of the balms we find in Nigeria. And of course, your, your, ta your tablets. But once it gets out of hand, you can't take those tablets for too long. If you're, they're not working, you need to get into the hospital. All right, so now let's talk about your foundation, Sickle Cell Foundation. You're both volunteers. Sickle with the Cell Aid, Aid foundation. foundation. I beg your pardon, SCAF. Yes. Sickle Cell Aid Foundation. You're both volunteers with SCAF. And um, how has SCAF been able to push out the message for Sickle Cell Awareness? How do you support people living with Sickle Cell? Um, we have this um, neurogenotype campaign. We go to urban German. The um, local areas, we do free genotype testing there, even in churches, mosques, schools. And we also have the sickle cell club that we're forming in different schools, schools in Nigeria, where we educate the young ones about their genotype, what they should know, and all that. And also, we are very active on Instagram. We're very active on social media. We're pushing the message out. And it also, staff supports by giving um, the people that cannot afford it some medication. And there have been cases where we've actually paid for some surgeries. Yeah, like some people that transplants. needed the bone marrow and um, the hip replacement surgery. Scarf actually sponsored some people. So, yeah, we're doing our bit that we can. When does it get to a stage where someone needs a hip replacement surgery? What led to that particular case that you're speaking about? Um, it's, it's just one of the sickle cell has different complications attached to it. So part of it is um, not enough blood and oxygen getting to that bone and it begins to wear off. And gradually the person is in pain when walking. And I, I know that some people do get bed reading. So when it gets to that stage, they need to have the hip replaced. Yeah. If not, they won't be able to do anything. Yeah. All right. So at the end of the day, um, SCAF, Sickle Cell Aid Foundation, helps by giving aid to people living with sickle, sickle cell. cell. Yes. Now, for people who want to be volunteers on your platform, do they have to be people living with sickle cell or anybody? No. Anybody. No. Can and be how volunteer. can they get to be associated with they SCAF? Can, um, they can send an email to SCAF. Um, you can check our email on our Instagram, Instagram page. bio or just send a DM. Somebody will reply.
All right. Do you have any special celebrations today or you're just going around creating awareness as you've done here? On yeah, Alpha? today is the World Sickle Cell Day. So we, are, we, we, we just want to show people that it's not the end of the world. You can look amazing. You can live an amazing life despite having sickle cell. And I think it's very to, important. Uh, yeah. And also to thank our sponsors, donors, everybody that supported sickle cell cause. Yeah. All right. So and for even those who are not living with sickle cell, it's important that they key into this project to get the message and to get the word out. And it's also important that I mentioned that you have a blog where you share stories, survival stories. What's the name of your blog? WarriorStory.ng. Warrior Stories. So yes. it's about people who are living with, with sickle, sickle cell, cell and have still been able to achieve the fullest potential. Yes, and also people that are not living with sickle cell but are indirectly affected by sickle cell. Yes. Yeah, so they also yeah. share affects. Story. It affects a lot Everybody. of people. Your yes. parents, your closest friends. There are times my friends are in tears when I'm ill because they're scared. So it does affect a lot of people, yeah. you know. So I had I was staying with a friend of mine. She's a doctor. Normally, you would expect you're a doctor. You're supposed to know this. And I had a crisis right in her front. She was going left, right. What should I do? What should I bring? <laughs> but you normally you expect okay, you're a doctor. You're supposed to know this thing. But when you see this thing happening. And because like, you're close to her, which is why they don't exactly. allow medical personnel treat exactly. yeah, people, people that they have some um, yeah. emotional affection for yeah. they're related to. But thank you so much for coming thank to share you. your thank story. You. Thank you for having thank us. You. And so we are much. so proud of you and so glad that you're living your life, living your best life and showing people that you can have sickle cell disease and it's not the end of the world. And it's also important that on a day like this, we advocate for everybody to do a genotype test. And for those living with AS, I understand the struggle of going on dates. You know, you go on a date and the first thing you're asking the guys, Sorry, please. So, what's your genotype? And the guy is wondering, uh, uh, you're just meeting. <laughs> Have you gotten that far? <laughs> really? <laughs> so, I think that's a very important question we should ask. At what point should a person who is a sickle cell carrier, that is AS, at what point should you ask of another person's genotype? At what point would you say they should ask? I would say the minute you know the person <laughs> likes you and you think there's a exactly. little bit of likeness, you should ask. Wouldn't they say you're being too forward? I'm saying I'm going to ask you. forward than to jump inside fire. Yeah, but that's <laughs> yeah. you really have to ask directly. You know, you just find your way. Oh, let's go to the from... lab for a test. What are we doing today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So oh, oh, I heard they're doing some free genotype testing. Well, maybe we should just go and try it out. <laughs> I know, right? Now, let me give you a t um, tip I once used. I said to a guy who was sick and he had been on the, like, he was well the night before and the next day he was super sick. And I said to him, wow, that's so strange. That's so strange because last night you were well and this morning you're really sick. And that I know happens to only people living with AS genotype. They rarely fall sick. But when they fall sick, it's always terrible. So are you AS? And the guy said, yes. I'm like, okay, X. So <laughs> please ensure that you ask the necessary questions before you start to catch feelings. And if you're living with sickle cell disease, it's not the end of the world. You can follow at Scarf Nigeria for more information. Yes. And your blog, how can yes. they follow your blog? You can follow on Instagram, um, warriorstory.ng. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a fantastic conversation. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.